Hello teacher, hello classmates, my name is Roberto Ortiz and I'm currently studying in the course Language Curriculum Design. And today I'm going to be talking about principles that deal with monitoring and assessment. Now, I'm going to be talking about methods and principles. Principles are going to be connected with methods and these principles are going to be surely based on research, which you can find information about them. Now, a method is a procedure, a technique, or a way of doing something. Well, in this case, it's a way of teaching. Now, teachers need to have an idea, need, need to research on what kind of principle, what kind of method they're going to be using in a classroom. Now, based on the situation, of course, that they are countering with in a classroom. Now, this way, teachers can have a good classroom environment. Now, there are 20 principles in total, but are divided into three groups. Now, these 20 principles are divided into three groups, so it can be a lot easier to classify and identify each principle. Now, content and sequencing has a total of eight principles. Format and presentation has a total of 10 principles. And monitoring and assessment, which I will be further talking about today, has a total of two principles. Now, monitoring and assessment. Now, monitoring and assessment is classified by two different types of principles. Now, the first principle we're, that we're going to be talking about is ongoing needs and environment analysis. What does this mean? Now, this means that teachers are going to be assessing the progress of their students. Teachers are going to be assessing the classroom environment which they are in. Teachers are going to be assessing the activities that they created for the students. They're going to be making an observation on if the activity is good for the students or if the activity is bad for the students. This is really important because it gives a teacher an opportunity, an idea to look back to um, identify the problems that maybe the activity that they planted had and furthermore uh, make the activity a lot better for the students so that they can understand um, the activity and not have any problems uh, while completing this type of activity. Now the second type of principle is feedback. Now, teachers need to make sure that students receive significant, helpful feedback, which will allow them to improve. It is important to make sure students receive helpful information. Feedback can be given by teachers, peers, and also classmates. For example, if a, te if a teacher is um, making students write a letter, and for example, Student's name, let's say Ricardo, makes an error, and and the teacher gives him helpful feedback. But it is really helpful for Ricardo to receive this help, feedback because he can improve his writing skills and improve his letters so that in the next activity that the teacher plans, uh, makes him write a letter. Ricardo can write the letter more easily. Also, it is important that peers and classmates um, give um, the student Ricardo feedback so that he can make sure that the letter is completed. Uh, successful and correctly. Now, in conclusion, I can say that te 
teachers should follow these different types of uh, principles based on the situation that they are encountering with. So a teacher needs to research uh, on what types of um, principles that um, they need to be using. Okay, here is my bibliography that um, I used for this PowerPoint and for my presentation. Uh, thank you, teacher. Thank you, classmates. I hope you enjoy. Uh, see you next time.